Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be talking about Mark of Chains, which is chapter 3 of CT4. And this video is going to be in two parts. So in the first part, I'm going to talk about these six uh, topics. And then in the next uh, video, I'll talk about the last seven topics. So without further ado, let's get into it. There is a lot of uh, material to cover in this chapter. But the good news is I really enjoyed this chapter and the material is actually a lot of fun. So the first thing is we get introduced to this thing known as a mark of chain. What is a mark of chain? I love these guys. I think they're really cool. And you're going to see that they have a lot of power when it comes to predicting the future. But let's take a step back and say, ask ourselves, what exactly is a mark of chain? Okay, it's a stochastic process. Remember from the previous video that a stochastic process is like a random variable that's changing throughout time. Um, and because it's going throughout time, we need to know what its time set is. And a mark of chain has a discrete time set, which means it will only change after every second, or after every minute, or whatever we define that to be. It's not going to be changing continuously. Um, and also because it's a random variable and it's changing, we need to know, well, what, what values could the change possibly take on? And what we need to first know is that the state space um, is discrete, which means it can only take on um, either countable numbers or numbers within a certain range, and it's not that infinite range as if it was continuous. And then finally, it has this thing known as the mark of property, which is really cool. The mark of property in English basically means that in order to predict the future, all you need to know is the present value. And the reason for that is because all the past information is stored within that present value. It's a very beautiful, philosophical, mathematical concept uh, to get your head around. But yeah, it really is cool. Next up, we have these things called transitional probabilities. Okay. And yeah, there's the big, long mathematical proof and we can all get all bogged down in it. But what exactly... Is transitional probabilities. It's the probability that I'm in state um, i and I go to state j. That's that's it. So I went from one state to the other state. So the i and the j represent the states. i is the starting state, j is the state that I end up in. And m and n are the time or the, they, 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 yeah, they're the time. So if you say n minus m you get the step transitional which is the amount of time between it, okay? You can then bring in your old chaplain Kolmogorov um, equation, and what this is basically saying is, in order to get from, the probability from getting from state i to state j is equal to the sum of all the states of me going from i to some other state and then jumping back to j throughout that time period. It's not that difficult if you like plot it out and use some examples. I know it looks very intimidating the first time you check that out. Now, why do we care about transitional probabilities? Because if we have the, the one-step transitional probabilities, so just from like n to n plus 1, we have the one-step transitional probabilities and we have the initial probability distribution, then these are the only things we need to, dis to specify the distribution of a Markov chain. And that's quite cool. It's just two parameters. Um, with these Markov chains, you get two types. Um, you get the time homogeneous and you get the time inhomogeneous. Now, time homogeneous means that if the transitional probabilities depend only on the time difference. So, you can see here, um, <clears throat> let's say if we day 5 to day 6, we'll have the same transitional probability as if it was day 3 to day 4 or day 100 to day 101. So we're only looking at the difference between the time zones and not actually the time itself. And this you'll, you'll see it, there's a little bit of linking to stationary, uh, which is what we spoke about in the previous chapter. Okay, now you get to something really cool. Um, this is the transitional matrix. And what this is, it's an n by n matrix, okay? And n is the number of states in the system. So let's say in this case we have three states. And what this is saying is that in order to, if I was in state 1, and I want to stay in state 1, after one time period, I have a 70% chance of staying within state 1, I have a 20% chance of moving to state 2, and I have a 10% chance of moving to state 3. 
So this grid here is actually really cool because it tells you what state I'm in and to what, what state I'm going to end up in and what is the probability. Um, and then, I mean, you can always get some really cool fancy questions like calculate the probability that in time 3 I'm in state 2 given that at state 0 I was in time 1. And then this is where your mathematics has to come in because you then multiply the probability by the state. You then use that, you times it again, you times it again, and bam, you get the answer to be just under 20%. And why, why do actuaries care about this? Um, the reason being is this thing has got so many applications. But one of the most common applications that you're going to see in the exam, it's this thing known as... Uh, a no claim discount system and what insurance uh, companies do is they don't know how good you are as a driver you know when you present them with your license they don't say oh this person's a super driver or this person's a bad driver no you're either a driver or you're not a driver um, and so in order for them to determine how good you are they count how many years you go by without having an accident so let's say you start here okay start zero you don't have an accident you don't have an accident okay and all these things and it, it this is your bonus okay but if you have one claim you then get thrown all the way back again so it's also a nice way it keeps people prevents people from just claiming on small amounts but yeah, this is that some of the questions can be very very tricky but like I said I enjoyed the section so I found these quite easy and just how some people like doing sudoku I really enjoyed doing these things but yeah, that's all I'm going to talk about in part one of the video. Part two, I'm going to be looking at simple random walks, stationary distributions, irreducibility, periodicity, um, the three conditions, long-term behavior, SMN transitional probabilities, and oh, my thing can't go a little bit go down anymore. There we go. The chi-squared test on triples to test if something has a mock product. But that will all be done in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this one and stay tuned for that one. Cheers.